you mentioned Toppin. Where are you with him? Um, I thought his offensive game would be much more polished than it has been. I admittedly did not watch enough tape on him because I didn't think he'd be there, to be quite honest with you. I don't and, think anyone did. And I, and, and I watched enough tape of his defense to know I didn't care what he did offensively. I didn't want them to really draft him, to be quite honest with you. Um, but everyone talked about you know how he's NBA ready. His offensive game is great. Let me ask you, John, how does Obi Toppin create his own shot? Um, he doesn't. Um, how do you pick a power forward eighth overall that can't defend and can't create his own shot? Well, here's the thing. So I think he creates his own shot. Here's here. No, I shouldn't say he doesn't. He doesn't right now. Um, I think there is a world where he can, because, you know, I, I I've been joking on my own podcast, uh, frequently, uh, that, you know, he's not playing the Fordham's and the Richmond's of the world anymore, where I don't know who was guarding him, but wasn't, you know, but you know, he, Dayton had some, some games against more legitimate competition. And so he wasn't going against, you know, these, these puny guys who were going to be bagging groceries, um, after college, um, all the time. And I think they're the post up game and the, and the face up game that he showed is, is very real, um, more post up than, than face up. But I think the path for him, and this is where I get myself into trouble because the idea of, of configuring your team to make it so that he's going to get to play some minutes at the five prominent minutes at the five moving forward. Like if you, people may not like that, but I think that's the path, right? John, I'm with you. That's exactly what I was going to say. I think if he's your five man to roll and pick and pop with four other shooters around him and he's that space player, he can catch it and pass off the pick and roll or catch and shoot or catch and dunk. That's his role. It's not OB, here's the ball, go make a play. It's yep. we run a pick and roll, then you make a play while you're in motion. And I think that's where it has to be. And when he's on the floor in Nolan's Noel and no one's covering that guy because he can't do anything offensively, it's hard for him to play that role, I think. it's And the I just sent out my newsletter today just as we were coming on. I should say we're recording this on, on a Tuesday morning. Um because that's how we roll. Um, <laughs> life with kids, boys and girls. I was about to say life with kids. That's, that, that is, <laughs> it was implied there. Um, but it, it, the numbers with him and Noel on the court together are you. you, you ch- it, let me put it this way: children should not look at it without a, an adult in the room uh, being ready to hold their hand. Um, is it that bad? Wow! It's like ninety points per hundred possessions scored. Wow. It's 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 ghastly. Um, but, but again, that makes sense, right? Um, because there's, there's not like there's some other shot creator there that's helping those lineups out. I mean, the shot creator in those lineups is the rookie. You just picked 25th. That's it. Right. (laughs) Um, so I, I completely agree with you. Um, and look, let's also say this, the Stoudemire comparisons were there, you know, um, coming into the draft that dude made all NBA teams just, feed like getting fed yeah. by Steve Nash, right? Mm-hmm. And using his otherworldly athletic ability to convert those. And we've seen Toppin do that a few times. So I think if you're looking for a bright spot on Toppin, you say, okay, he could pass better than I thought. He hasn't been a train wreck on defense. And we've already seen the ability to finish those plays when he gets the opportunity to finish them.